Chris, what is our first main topic today? Our first topic is going to come from Patrick Brown. Hello, Campia crew. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. A couple weeks ago, you guys talked about J.J. Abrams' Demonde series being in potential jeopardy because of its huge budget. Well, it's no longer in jeopardy as it's no longer even happening. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this series cancellation? And do you think it's just the first of what could be many bad robot projects to feel the acts of Zaslav? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And what's the name of the show? De Demonde? It's uh, we looked up the Demi pronunciation. Demi Mond. Demi Mond. Demi Mond. Demi Mond. Demi Mond. What did that mean again? The class of women considered to be of doubtful morality and social standing. Also see Chris Carr and Aaron coming. Yes. There we go. The, my co-host on the show, ladies and Demi, Demi Mond. Demi Mond. Yay. Whatever it's going to be called. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's but then it sounds like Digimon. That's, that's how we right. remember Digimon. it. That's right. Digimon. Okay. <laughs> Loose French women. That's yeah. right. That's Loose what French you said. Women. Do, how does it sound? <laughs> are the champions. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so... Here's the thing. Yeah, well, you guys will remember that we talked about this the other day when news kind of came out that, you know, the the new high grand poobah over there at All Things Warner Brothers, David Zaslov, was not happy with some of the details and the arrangement and the deal that Warner Brothers had with Bad Robot. He wasn't happy that they had Warner Brothers hadn't really seen anything come out of that deal yet. And he was particularly curious about a $200 million plus production budget for this show Demimon that has no background, no pre-existing IP, nothing like that, which makes it more expensive than the upcoming Game of Thrones show, House of the Dragon, to which they said, why for? I mean, like, why why, why are we spending $200 plus million on this show that nobody knows? We have no idea if anybody's going to watch it versus under $200 million that we're spending on a Game of Thrones show that we know we're going to get a lot of eyeballs on it. And so we kind of talked about the fact that J.J. Abrams and team drew a line in the sand that said, nope, we are... We are sticking by it. We made an agreement for $200 million plus. We're going to stick with $200 million plus. At the time of which I said, hey, I don't blame them. If you made a deal, there's nothing wrong with you holding your ground and saying you made a deal with us, so we're sticking to it. But even though I get your right to hold your ground, you got to understand that the person writing the checks, <laughs> so they've got a little bit of leeway here. If they don't want to spend that much money, they may not want to spend that much money. And sure enough, the Axe of Zaslav has fallen once again because this project is no longer happening at HBO Max. This comes to us from the good folks over at The Hollywood Reporter who write the following. As expected, uh, Demi Mond will not be moving forward at HBO. The series has officially been passed over by the premium cable network following issues surrounding the show's sprawling budget. Sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that Abrams made a last-ditch plea to HBO slash HBO Max boss uh, the HBO, HBO Max boss, ultimately the decision was made to part ways with the series for which Abrams had sought a budget north of $200 million. By comparison, HBO's upcoming Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon, clocked in at less than $200 million. Abrams was also slated to direct the pilot for Demi Mond, which has already changed showrunners since it landed at HBO in 2018 following a bidding war with Apple. And that, of course, comes to us from The Hollywood Reporter. Now, at this point, J.J. Abrams and Warner Brothers Television and all that kind of stuff, they now have the right to shop this show around. So they're going to go to Apple Plus, which J.J. is doing some stuff with. They're going to take this thing probably to Peacock. They're probably going to take it to Netflix. They're going to shop it around, and see if they can get somebody to pick it up for $200 plus million dollars. And some people would say, well, wait a minute, why can they shop it around? Well, the reason they can shop it around is because these deals are basically called first look deals. And all a first look deal means is that when JJ comes up with a show, he has to give the option first to HBO and say, here, you have the first choice if you want to make this or not. And if they say, no, we don't want to make it, you can take that away. I have in my career signed several first look deals. And all that meant was if I had a show idea, I had to first go to this company and say, you get dibs on this idea. And if you don't want to do it, then I can take the idea and go somewhere else with it. So that's probably what this thing here uh, is. Look, on the one hand, I totally get J.J. Abrams holding his ground. They made a deal. He's got a vision for a show. He wants it to be for $200 million. Fine. And he might even find a sucker to do it. And that sucker might be Apple, who has more money than the universe. Yeah. So, And they can buy and sell HBO 17 times over. Mm -hmm. So that might be a destination. Maybe an Amazon might be a destination. Or maybe nobody is going to go, why would we pay $200 million for a series that has no recognizable IP? So I, I don't know. We want to take a minute and thank the sponsors of this video, Liquid IV. Now listen, just one stick 
of Liquid IV added to 16 ounces of water will hydrate you faster and more efficiently than just water alone. It contains five essential vitamins like B3, B5, B6, B12, and of course vitamin C with three times the electrolytes as traditional sports drinks. And what makes Liquid IV so effective is the science of cellular transport technology or CTT. You see, it's designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into your bloodstream faster and more efficiently. You know, Ann and I get up pretty early in the morning to go to the gym because we can't go to the gym at any other time during the day. And for the last couple of weeks, I have been drinking one full glass of water with Liquid IV. And all I can tell you is you can feel the difference during the workout. So go and grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code CAMPIA at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code CAMPIA. Campia, that's C-A-M-P-E-A, at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today when you go to liquidiv.com. And remember, use the promo code at checkout, Campia. Chris, are you surprised that ultimately this thing got cut? And do you think this show gets picked up somewhere at the full $200 plus million budget? Or do you think maybe somebody will pick it up for like a $150 million budget? I don't know. What do you think? I'm not particularly surprised just because Zaslav has been going around, not with a scalpel, but with a machete. Yeah. He is cutting budgets. He is tying up things and making sure that this ship is very nice and tight, right? And so when there wasn't wiggle room on this budget, it made sense to me that this was not going to go through ultimately. What stands out to me is it does make me nervous about original IPs, especially when it comes from somebody like a JJ, right? Because... What a great brain. What wonderful products. What wonderful films we've gotten from that, right? Um, I know through his deal, he also has things with some existing IP, Bad Robot at least I should yeah. say, for oh, the places you go and a Hot Wheels movie and other things that I'm frankly not as interested in as this concept. I think something like an Apple TV would pick it up. I think they might try to negotiate the budget still a little more. Maybe shave off, you know, 10, 20 uh, mill off of that just to make it a little more reasonable but i feel like this definition of this word and the idea of this show this kind of renegade misfits in space i think it was ultimately <laughs> um seems very up apple's alley both yeah, um, yeah, in does. terms of something that's kind of missing from their roster right now and also just an ideology and concept it seems very very apple tv so i think that'd be the smart move see the one it doesn't make me worry about uh original unique ip because most, dare I say, no original unique IP comes into a studio and says, we need $200 million to make That's this, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if that was the case, if this was like, oh, we wanted $75 million to make this show yeah. and they were captain, I'd go, oh, that puts you worried about I'm I, I'm not really worried about That's it true. being That's true. We live in a world with everything everywhere all at once. That's yes. proven that you can do so very much for so very little. So very, very little. Aaron, you hear about this. Number one, are you surprised that ultimately HBO and Bad Robot parted ways with Demi Mond? And do you see somebody else picking it up? for the full 200 plus million that J.J. Abrams wants for it. Well, I'm definitely not surprised because when there's smoke, there's usually fire. If you hear a rumor about something happening in Hollywood, and we discussed this, whether it was last week, two weeks ago, I forget when it came up, but that there was a rumor that there were financial concerns with Demi Mon, and clearly here we are seeing the results of it. So the smoke clearly indicated that there was fire. Another thing that in this quote from The Hollywood Reporter that's concerning to me, um, when it says it has already changed showrunners since it landed at HBO in 2018, following a bidding war at Apple. This says, okay, Apple already wanted this project. So there's two things just in that one sentence. Number one, Apple already lost this property, which the fact that if there was a bidding war, it makes me question whether or not there was a first look deal. Because if there was the first look deal, then why was there a mm, bidding that's war? That's true. Yep. If that's there was a, really a first good point. look deal, there shouldn't have been a bidding war. It should have just been like, well, our first look deal is with HBO. They get the first right of refusal. And hey, we've also snuck this to some people at Apple. So if HBO is, you know, not really sure about it, no problem. We'll just go to Apple. They can afford it. They want it. No problem. So that's already a first red, like something that just makes my spidey sense go, what's going on here? My second thing is the fact that it's already changed showrunners. Now, that could have been something, I mean, who knows what that actually meant. But for those of you out there who are like, 
a show what is a showrunner a showrunner is ultimately the head writer they are the person that is in charge of all of the scripts and they also do a lot of the, they do all the hiring for the writing staff they hire a lot of the directors their hands are in everything they, they ultimately decide where the show goes mm -hmm. well they well they and uh, the creator which yeah. is not necessarily always the showrunner um like Shonda Rhimes was the showrunner of Grey's Anatomy and then from there she became the executive producer and creator of many other shows but that doesn't mean she was running she wasn't the showrunner yeah. of those shows so just to give you a little reference on that so the fact that it so the showrunner is a very important piece of this puzzle of actually creating what the show is going to be and the fact that this show already changed hands on such a major creative level that also makes me wonder if there was just not a lot of confidence in the project itself when it came down to it um i do think that this could live somewhere else but also i'm wondering is this a zav a zaslav call or is this a call for the head of HBO, who is Casey Bloys? And Casey Bloys, back in 2019, was quoted in The Hollywood Reporter as saying, we have enough money to compete with all of our rivals. Yeah, that well, was before Zaslav's age. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So but that's what I'm saying is we're seeing in this quote that this was an HBO decision. Was it a, a Warner Brothers decision or was it an HBO decision? Because the the show is still under the umbrella of Warner Brothers, correct? But it's now going to be shopped out to other Warner streamers. Brothers Television is going to be the production company behind it. Right. So Warner Brothers, Zaslav is still involved. It's just HBO that's not involved. So that's why I wonder, like, who's actually making this decision? It sounds like it's Casey Bloys over at HBO, not necessarily Zaslav. Although, you know, Zaslav is slashing left and right. We're going to give him credit for everything not happening in Hollywood right now. But it might have been someone else not having to do with him at all. Either but way, we know from the story last week that's, that the story in Variety, like specifically laid out that Zaslav particularly called into question and wanted the, the bad robot deal brought in front of him. And he expressed a lot of problems with the deal including the demi mon thing so it does right, but like then why is it be now being shopped to other streamers because it's still being produced by warner brothers but remember there's 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 a church and state relationship between a lot of the product it's the same reason why i think lucifer was wasn't lucifer a warner brothers television it was, production yeah. but it was on fox television so why wasn't it on there? So there's a little bit of a church and state between the production company and then ultimately the network, how much the network has to pay for it. Because on the books, and we're spending way too much time on this, but on the books, you still have to show how you got to compete because of all the talent agreements and who has back end deals and things like that. Mm -hmm. You still got to pay for it on mar fair market value. And so that can become a really weird thing. That's why you see CBS television shows popping up on ABC and right. all that, I just all that think kind of There stuff. is something in deal making. Like I know that whenever we've gone in to negotiate some contracts, I've always been like, okay, I really want to do this project. So get me the most money and the most perks, but don't lose the job because agents absolutely can talk themselves oh, out yeah. of a job. And so this is a situation where I just go, Hey JJ, maybe you go, Hey, we'll work on this, but like we want to make this happen. How can we compromise? All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? It, we heard that there were problems with this show, and now it's no longer going to be on HBO. Can it find life somewhere else? Does, Amazon, does, does an Apple TV who did bid on it before go, ah, you rejected us before. I don't know that we want to play with you now. Or is business business? I don't know. What do you guys think is going to happen here? Jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.